Hey everybody, I'm in Mohammed Zahur's beautiful office. He was my guest last night on his beautiful wife's broadcast. Uh, I, I, streamed it, I streamed it live. I hope you all had a chance to watch it. And I'm in his office where he uh, controls his uh, empire. And um, it's so happy to meet you and, and come to Kiev and see your city. Same here. How long have you been living in Kiev? Well, since 2003, I'm living here most of my time. Uh, that's the time, actually, I met my uh, wife. Okay. So, since before, I was living in London. And uh, before that, I was living in Moscow. So, oh. yeah. yeah. So, that's my geography. Now, you're, is your wife from the, uh, the city? She, she's from Kiev. She's from here. Oh, yeah. she's a local. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> I loved your tea. That would be fantastic tea. If you want tea. Uh, that tea? Tea would be fantastic. So, uh, what is your favorite city? I mean, you travel extensively, I'm sure. What's your favorite city? Well, I love London. I spend more, most of my time there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter and my son, who from my first marriage, they live also there. So, I love London the most actually and uh, of course there are a lot of other good cities like yeah Paris, Vienna, uh, Prague, Budapest, uh, St. Petersburg, Kiev uh, so all these cities are beautiful actually. Yes and um, I plan on exploring more of them as you might know I've been on the road for 188 days today uh, 14,000 miles in America Mm -hmm. 22 states, and this is my first uh, country to visit. I think um, my logical next step is Montenegro. Okay. I'm told that's beautiful. Very beautiful. Uh, I want to go to Croatia soon. Have you been to well, Croatia? Next, yeah, it's next door, actually. Next door as well? Yeah. I'm very bad on geography. Uh, <laughs> you might have to send me... <laughs> Montenegro and Croatia, they are just they are, they are okay. neighbors. So while I'm in the neighborhood... Yeah, I'm... so if you are going to Montenegro... Going to uh, Montenegro is very small. Yeah, there okay. are just six hundred fifty thousand people living there. Oh wow! Yeah, it is small. Yeah, and uh, then uh, Croatia. They are actually well. You know, it's it was all Yugoslavia before. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they then broke up into seven or eight or nine countries. Oh. Yeah. So Croatia and uh, Montenegro, they are the most beautiful part of actually. That area, it's on the Adriatic Sea. Yes. Both both the countries. Okay. And uh, both are very beautiful. And I can get there from train, I imagine, from here. From here, I think you have to go to, I don't know how, but by train, you can you cannot go straight to Montenegro. Yeah. So you have to take by plane. Oh, you can't go straight. Yeah. Or uh, you you can go by bus somehow. Okay. Yeah, you can go by train maybe up to Budapest or up to uh, Warsaw, and then from Warsaw you have to change the train and go to. Uh -huh. other, so so you, you have to do some searching. <laughs> okay, okay. I know a lot of countries change their rail system so they can't be invaded by rail. That's only the Soviet Union. Is that the Soviet? <laughs> yeah, not, not the other countries. So okay. whenever you're getting out of Soviet Union, you have to change the gauge. Right, the gauge. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yes, the gauge. Yeah. That's funny. So, uh, I'm a motivational speaker, as you might know. What motivates you in life? In... Well, uh, I'm motivated by actually people. People who love or who, is, who are inspired by their whatever, whatever, doesn't matter, by their jobs, by the things they do, what, what they like or whatever. But if they are doing it with real inspiration, that always motivate, motivate me. So if you are, a, let's say, opera singer, and uh, I will never be an opera singer, but when you see and you see, you see how, how, how he or she is singing, that motivates you, or uh, it's I inspirational think, yeah. to see someone with passion yeah. and love do what they want. And, uh, my uh, they, there was a lady actually, opera singer from Spain called Montserrat Caballier. Okay, and uh, she was she, she was a diva. 
And uh, so she came to Kiev, I think two, two years ago. And uh, so we went to, and it was her birthday. So we went on her birthday here. And we went there and uh, then uh, my wife sang a song there for, for her. And uh, she's, she, she's a beautiful uh, singer and uh, she does opera, she does pop, she does everything. So, and it was so powerful. And then she said, now I have a question to you, to this diva or prima donna, to, uh, that uh, what inspires you? That uh, the world is inspired by you, but what inspired you? And she says, I'm inspired by such people like you. When you sing with such a passion, that inspired me. So that was a big comment from uh, from a person like uh, Mansurat Kabali, actually. Yes. It's funny how celebrities have their own celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> so they, it's retroactive, so to speak. Yeah. It's fantastic. So your wife has been singing her whole life? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she was three years old. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic to carry an instrument. Yeah, with you like that, you know. My mother was a singer. She sang for the big bands in America, Buddy Rich and Jen Garber. But I can't carry a tune, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> but we can listen and enjoy it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's. You know, I think you can. I don't know these singers whether they enjoy uh, singing or they enjoy listening to their mentors or whatever. But I love singing, uh, listening to whatever I like. Yes, yeah. No, it's music uh, is the uh, the soul, you know. I mean, it's it's, it's very soulful, yeah. it's inspiring, it's it's beautiful. I mean, without music, where would we be without music, you know? Absolutely nowhere. Nowhere, you know. Yeah. I actually, um, I'm a producer, I produced Ray Charles. You okay. might have heard of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's over there. There he is? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So he, <laughs> I, I produced him on his 50th birthday yeah. uh, concert at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, a big hall in America, in Los Angeles. You know. Have you been to Los Angeles? Yeah, many times. Many times. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's a great place to visit. <laughs> it's a great place, yeah. yeah. There's so many places to visit. Um, this, this, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Kiev. Like I say, I was St. Andrews today. You know, of course, most everything's closed because of the COVID, you know. Yeah. Oh, the bad thing about the American cities are they're so big, actually, and so, so you have to always go by car. Yeah. These uh, European cities, uh, at least you can go by foot. You can walk around, you can see the churches, the museums, this and that, and they, are, they have big, big, big culture. Yes. Yeah. I saw. A, yeah. I had a beautiful day today, walking uh, to to St Andrews and seeing the view from up there. It's a fantastic view. Um, I plan on going on a Ferris wheel tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As I go around the world, I go on each Ferris wheel as in each city. <laughs> and exactly. I mean, yeah. But I love talking to the local people, interviewing uh, everyone, and everyone has a fantastic story. It's just it's such a um, you know uh, you know we're. We're looking at a, the world now in a different light because we've been sequestered and we're learning that the simple things in life are, are probably better. You know, when, I, when COVID first started, I told people to plant a garden. Go out with your children, teach them how to plant a um, tomato plant. Yeah. And ha if they listened to me six months ago, they have a nice flourishing garden with fresh organic fruits and vegetables. It looks like my wife heard you, actually. She might have heard me. Yeah, <laughs> yes? because she, she made those, uh, all my, those, uh, what do you call, the the lawn, she turned it to those, the potato, the, the tomato place, oh. the, the gherkin place, and uh, uh, <laughs> so, I don't know, uh, the paprika somewhere, there's blueberry here. And uh, even those uh, mushrooms and all these things. So she started uh, uh, having her own few chickens. So she have, we have hens and we have cocks. <laughs> all around. So what's, what is happening here? Fresh eggs. Yeah, fresh eggs no, yeah. The simple things in life are what really enhances yeah. 
your life, you know, to have fresh eggs and a fresh tomato, you know, for your salad and know that you did it yourself. Yeah, it's very rewarding. Yeah, and she actually, she's not just somebody who just bought them and bought, she's taking care of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, it's uh, a therapy. It's yeah. a fantastic mental therapy. And you know? uh, then one of the uh, hen, she gave those little chicks, yeah? And mm -hmm. uh, so she bought those. Yeah, they have babies. In, yeah, incubators and... Uh, and she goes every time. She she goes for horse riding. She came back, and she goes straight to that place. And she she fed them and uh, looking at the temperature. And she says, oh my God, you have nothing to do. <laughs> That's the the simple. See, people in life seem to chase and want to have things, you know, the fancy car, the this or that. But moments are what is really cherished in life. You know, the moments of seeing the little baby chick born and to have it grow up and deliver you an egg, you know, for your breakfast. But, and most people don't know that you don't need to refrigerate a natural egg. Did you know that? No. You don't need to put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. You can sit it for weeks on, on, on the counter. Well, I know that uh, in good old days, yeah, when people did not have actually any refrigerator, so they were just keeping it at some place. Uh, it doesn't matter the, the temperature. Dark, yeah. It doesn't matter the temperature with an egg. No, most people don't know that. See, one of, as a philosopher, one of the things I tell the, the children is the more you know, the easier your life is, and the more valuable you are to others. And it's all about knowledge, knowing that you don't need to refrigerate that egg, knowing that you can eat this or you can't eat that. You know, It's very important. to, And uh, with this phone that they have nowadays, if I tell the children, open that phone up and ask it questions all day long. Because the answer to everything is a millisecond away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, and, and uh, you know, as we get older, you know, we're both in, a, uh, we've been around the block a couple of times. Life is easier because of what we know. And we try to teach our children that, but sometimes they don't listen too well. <laughs> and you have children. Yeah. So uh, that is, that's, to be a good parent is um, going to pave the way for a better future. And that's what move, my movement is to teach children to that words matter. Words matter. Yeah. And that to delete the word good from your vocabulary is not easy because we've been saying good our whole lives every day. And to replace it with the word fantastic. Have you been trying it since you heard about um, um, that word from me? Well, I just heard from you. So I'll try to change it to fantastic. It is my, my daughters, they do say it. They, they do? Yeah. That's, yeah. see, it's very rare. Um, I've actually asked over 5,000 people if they've ever met someone in their life that says fantastic. Guess how many out of 5,000 has have said yes? What's your guess? 99% of the people guess 10 or less, and actually the number is 112 mm -hmm. out of 5,000. More. I stopped counting at 5,000. But... It's very rare, and the people that use it are never forgotten. They live longer. It's an act of kindness to say that word. I want you to tell all your employees that when they end up at a phone call, not to say have a good day or have a good evening. Have a fantastic day. It will change their sales. It will increase their sales. It will increase their life and their mental sanity because it reduces stress. Yeah. Say it now. Say, I am fantastic. I am fantastic. <laughs> you can feel it. Yeah. It releases endorphins and dopamine and serotonin in your brain. Mm -hmm. And that releases stress. And with less stress, you have you live longer. It's science that says this. I didn't make this. Mm -hmm. But they call me Dr. Fantastic because I just gave you and your employees the prescription for a happier and longer life. And it's an act of kindness, believe it or not. And I'm so happy that even today, the people I've met, I must have introduced it to maybe 10 people today. Mm -hmm. And it changes their lives. It really does. And I'm happy to do that. So I'm on a path. And uh, mm -hmm. when I can come in to uh, meet people that have been successful or people that have had success, what I really love is people who have had success and then put it aside and don't want the money anymore. And they do good for you know, the homeless or they, do, or they just travel or like um, uh, Udair's parents traveling the world right now that is living large you know just to see the world and not just try to make a bunch of money you know yeah 
I mean, we need money to survive, obviously. We need those kind of things. But uh, I really enjoy these kind of conversations because when I make a conversation like today, it's never edited. It's never rehearsed. And it's never a second take. It's a natural conversation between two humans. Exactly, yeah. And that's all we have is um, our, our communication. One of my theories in the future is we won't use words to communicate. We use telepathy. Mm-hmm. And you already use that with your wife. You could look in her eyes and know what she's think, thinking. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we don't quite know how, most people don't know, quite know how to use it or communicate with it, but it will be the future, you know, telepathy. Right now we have words, and sometimes they're in Russian, sometimes they're in Chinese. I don't know, do you believe in UFOs, extraterrestrials? You know, uh, I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, but uh, my wife and her mother, they they are believer in everything, everything, whatever is. Well, I look forward to talking to your wife because I'm a UFO expert. Uh-huh. Seen hundreds and hundreds of hours of documented proof of artifacts, you know, um, that have uh, that are tens of thousands of years old. Um, construction that we can't do today. We can't figure how they made things in the past. Um, there's a, a movie called a Revelation of the Pyramids. Mm-hmm. If you don't watch any other movie about UFOs or about our past, watch this movie. It's on, I think, Netflix or, or YouTube. It's called The Revelation of the Pyramids. It will open your eyes to uh, the fascination, this fa- fascinating past that we've had. Well, I really don't want to bother myself anymore <laughs> with, with the things which all your life you think I'm better off without this. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's true. And it's, yeah, I've seen this on National Geographic and, and uh, Discovery and all these things. They're, these are movies about this. I don't believe it. Don't it's, believe it. I don't believe it because in the movie, you can create everything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So the, the computer technology has uh, improved that much that now people are standing before they were jumping and doing this and now they are behind this green wall doing everything and then you watch a movie where everybody is sailing, somebody is fighting, somebody is doing this, somebody is on the computer and they, they never had that computer in, in front of those. <laughs> I agree completely with what you're saying, like Jurassic Park. Yeah. Those dinosaurs look completely real, yeah. right? But the only thing that, see, I'll bet my life that there's aliens and they've been here before mankind was here. Because of the artifacts, when we have, we have artifacts that are so old we can't explain how they were made. So that to me tells there was an intelligences that were before we were here that were doing things, you know. But if you do you understand the word infinity, the concept of infinity? Most well, humans can't comprehend that. But what's your feeling on infinity? Well, to me, infinity is, well, first of all, the sign of infinity, yeah? Mm-hmm. That everything is there for always right and uh, but uh, for 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 the life of a person is not infinity but their deeds are really infinite can go on forever yes yeah a so song can get, maybe can go on forever song could be your good things you if you have done something good to an orphan and that orphan become Bill Gates or whoever yes. uh, and things moves on and go on and, and things like that. So deeds are uh, really infinite defen- depending on whether it's good or bad. Yes. You could be a hero, you could be a villain as well. Correct. Yeah. And uh, But uh, lifespan you cannot increase. If, well, 100 years is given to you, you'll live 100. So then you're done. Right. But if you have done good jobs, people will remember you for a much, much longer period. Right, right. And um, one of the things I do on my show is called, I call it Famous Quotes Read by Fantastic People. And I'm going to have you read one in a little bit. But what it is, is these people like Aristotle and, and really Abraham Lincoln, they've said things that go on for infinite because they're so, they're so beautiful and they're so true and they're so wonderful, you know, and fantastic. And so I, I have that in my, in my show. That's mm-hmm. really kind of fun because um, when people pick out of the bag this quote randomly, 
most every time it really resonates with them. Like this one lady, she goes, oh my goodness, this quote's from Herman Melville. He came from my hometown. And it just, it, these quotes, it's, just, it's really fascinating to see them reach into a, randomly you pull, pull out a, a quote from history and read it. And it's quite, quite fun. It's one of my fun things I do on the, on the channel. Mm -hmm. But um, I've got thousands of interviews and I love meeting uh, people from all over the world. And of course, I've met people from all over the world in America. Um, this movement of mine is in 43 countries. Uh, and it's, uh, I have 626 um, ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Amir is an ambassador now. He's going to pass it on to his children, hopefully. And we're going to make the world a better place. Yeah. We need to make the world a better place. It's, it's Unfortunately, it's a greedy, selfish, litigious world. And I feel that being kind um, is the answer, to be kind. And saying fantastic is an act of kindness, believe it or not, because you're making someone smile. Smiling and laughing, when you smile or laugh, science says you live five minutes longer. You extend your life by five minutes because it reduces stress, because of the endorphins, the dopamine, and the serotonin. And this is my message to people to smile. It's the easiest thing to do, hopefully, and to give, because it's a giving thing, because when you smile, they smile back. Yeah. And it's, it's in every language the same, the smile or laughter. And the most important thing, it doesn't cost you a penny. Exactly, it doesn't <laughs> cost you a penny. Yeah. What is a penny in um, this uh, currency? What's it called? What, your Co Copic. It's a Copic. It doesn't cost you a Copic. Yeah. <laughs> I found a Copic, I think, on the street uh, while I was filming yesterday. And this little bitty thing it said 10. Is that yeah. the smallest Copic? A 10? Before, there was one, actually. I yeah. haven't seen it. I have, actually. I put it somewhere. Yeah. Oh. Here they are, actually. Oh. I have 25... I have 50 and 5. This is 5, actually. Oh, it's a 5. It's, yeah. it's even bigger than the 10. Five. It's bigger than the 10. 50 and uh, 25. There we go. Yeah. But see, I had a 10, so I beat. I got you beat. Okay. I, I have some more here, actually. <laughs> Do you have a 1? That's the question. I'm looking. I think I have something. Very small something. This is 10. This is yeah, that's what I found. Yeah. Yeah. Now in America, when I see a penny, I think to myself, if I yeah, bend it. There's one actually. Oh, you have a one. Yeah. Very good. So I, I, I always felt that if you picked up a one or a, ten, or a penny and you threw your back out, it wasn't quite worth it. <laughs> so there is a one, everybody. Even smaller than, uh, <laughs> than a ten. That's fantastic. So what is. Um, let me think uh, what else did I want to ask you. Advice for, you know, the world is watching. Uh, we talked about a lot of fantastic things here this morning. Um, if you had to tell, give a, a motivation to the world, what would it be? Well, actually, I have very little to motivate people. People read about me, they get motivated. But when... I'm talking to them or I have nothing to give them. But what I tell them is how I'm being motivated. Okay. Now, uh, and I always take people uh, like my wife, yeah? I'm, I live in close society. I don't go out. I don't do a lot of things. So I look around and I look at the people. Now, when my wife, she got COVID, and she was feeling so bad and she went to the hospital and the doctor they prescribed her do this 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 she came back and she immediately opened her blog and she started talking to the people i said listen you're not feeling very well why are you doing this and she said because when i caught this thing i didn't know anything about that and now I know a little bit about it. I want to share it with the people. Because there are thousands and thousands of people out there who are really like me, who don't know what to do in case this thing hit you. Millions. Yeah. And she went out and, uh, and then the people, they just flooded in. And they, they 
but flooded her with the questions. Mm. And what like this? If I do this, if I do that. And there were so many. And next time when she went to the doctor, she took those questions <laughs> with her. Oh. And then she asked the doctors that people are asking me these questions. What, what are the right answers? Right. And then she just wrote down the answers so that she couldn't make it up from her side. Right. And then she did the second one. And then she replied to all the questions which the people were concerned about. Right. And so on. And now she's doing it on regularly basis. People are asking, we love your uh channel and uh, we love asking you and we love wh how wh what you are telling mm -hmm. and they said the ministry of health didn't do that much work what you have done out of your seven eight or ten of those uh, little shows right so it's all about sharing sharing what you know yes even if that is if if you are in bad shape actually so sometimes people share because okay you are you are, you are rich, so you are sharing some of your wealth. I put it in yeah. pause. Yeah. So you're right. Sharing is giving, is kindness. Yeah. And no matter what you share, because she was sharing something which she was a victim of. And she was sharing her grief. She was sharing her not knowing actually about what is happening to her and uh, so and what she has known by visiting to the doctor mm -hmm. and she want to share that thing with the people and she knows that in this country Kiev is a big town and if you go outside Kiev there's nothing hospitals are very poorly equipped no medicine mm -hmm. nothing so she wanted to give to those people, not the people living in Kiev, but the people living in the villages, in small towns, the, no medical facilities, that how you are going to make yourself safe by drinking a lot of water, taking a lot of vitamin C, or doing this or that, and uh, if you don't have any doctor, then take this one, take some aspirin, so things like it, it just for uh, preventive uh, medicines, and uh, at, once again, it it was all authenticated by the doctor. Not mm -hmm. that she was giving. She was making up stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. It, again sharing knowledge is yeah. again the more you know, the and easier people, life is. People they loved it actually, and everybody. I haven't seen so many words of thanks. They were few thousand comments wow. and she was going each and every comment each one and that's a lot of work yeah and she was just looking at it. thank God from one side that okay you you were sick you're not going out you're not doing anything secondly you don't have any more concerts in fact because of this COVID. right right all the concert halls and everything is closed right so you have a lot of time so she found a good reason actually an outlet yeah, yeah. for energy yeah. and positivity yeah i am the professor of positivity yeah. possibly and practically the most positive person on the planet <laughs> i'd love to see the positive in everything you know and the, the what i was telling people for the last since i've been doing my broadcast on covid is that it's the positive if you look at the positive is it going to be a cleaner world uh, the restaurants are cleaner the the train stations are cleaner everything's cleaner uh, the families came together, and so, and they were forced to, because the, the people that are making a lot of money, they go out there and they, they make money, and they're not seeing their children, they're not seeing their wife. Now they're forced to to be at home, and that's a fantastic time to to share time with your family. Well, I'm so happy that we've covered a few uh, topic, topics. We went from UFOs to, to COVID, to happiness, yeah. to sharing, to uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful life. Uh, and uh, I saw your beautiful home last night, and I, was, uh, I did a, a webcast, as you know. I, I was behind the scenes, and mm -hmm. we did the whole thing. Of course, I don't know a word they said, <laughs> but they covered a lot of stuff last night. How long did it go on for? 
It was almost for two two hours. I I got one hour and eleven minutes of it. Yeah. My my battery was dying. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, they covered a lot of stuff. That's that's fantastic. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, can I, do you mind if I uh, show the world yeah. your beautiful um, it's, it's pictures? Yeah. Yeah. This is his beautiful office. And this um, wife is obviously a, a horse lover and a pop singer. They have beautiful babies. What is this one right here? What, what's happening there? It's, I'm giving away an award because we own the, the uh, Ukrainian Grammy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So every year. And who was that award going to? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> but one thing we have decided to be fair, uh -huh. my my wife is not going to receive any of those awards. Otherwise, people will always think that. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course, that's uh, people's nature is to yeah. be negative. Unfortunately, uh, it's a, we live in a very negative uh, world, and we, you and I, we need to get out there and tell everyone to clean up their act. Yeah, you know? yeah, because people, they, 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 they love making those arguments. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, I was always getting thumbs up. And one day, this gentleman, a, a very famous person, gave me the biggest compliment in the world, saying what, how important my movement was. And I posted it on a standalone, and I got a thumbs down. <laughs> and I, I go, I can't believe someone would... S Put a thumbs down to such a beautiful statement and then i heard they're called um trollers and no matter how positive yeah. things are out there they're just going to shit on it exactly. because uh, yeah. their lives are miserable i guess yeah. i don't know yeah. trollers so, but i took haters. it personally yeah. <laughs> i took it personally but then i realized that uh there are people out there that just don't get it and they these trollers actually they they don't have their avatar also they they just they're, they're secret just, yeah, yeah. They're, they're hiding behind yeah. the curtain and just being mean you know, and um, like I say, my thing is kindness. Uh, the fantastic movement is is an act of kindness, and I'm going to stick with it and see how where where it goes. But right now, I have people keep asking me, like even today, the gentleman I interviewed, he said, well, "Where are you going next?" And said, "I don't know." Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know I was coming here. I was supposed to go to Costa Rica, and they said, "Would you mind going to um, um, Zahor? And I said, "Well." I never been to Kiev. Well, I'll go, <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. Uh, so your next is Montenegro. Why? I, I don't why know. do you think Montenegro? You like the name Montenegro? I love the name. Yeah. <laughs> First off, well, my name is Monty. Okay. So I don't tell people anymore because that doesn't do you any good to know my name is Monty. So you know uh, Montenegro. What's the meaning of Montenegro? Well, um, I would say a black mountain. Exactly. Uh, because the Negro is black and, and Monte is Spanish for mountain. Yeah. Uh, but Doug's... Overpopulated cities around the world have caused people to become a greedy, selfish, and litigious society. Would you like to be happier, live longer, never be forgotten, and help make the world a kinder, more civil place? It's actually easier than you think. Every day you're asked, how are you? Instead of saying good, say, I am fantastic will make you look better, feel great, and reduce your stress. Making the world a better place starts with each person. Please join the Be Fantastic movement today. What you want to be, you can be. Be Fantastic.